Hello everyone, and welcome to episode 32. The main focus for today will be the expansion of the service infrastructure in town. The towers are getting close to their occupancy limit, and we are nowhere near the amount of workers that I would be happy with for our current industries. This will involve adding the necessary buildings around the new housing development, so when we open the floodgates in the next episode, it should all be ready to go. It is getting really cramped at the first bus station at this point, and we really need to start splitting the buses between it, and the second station we built recently. Unemployment is starting to climb slowly, and it's all down to the throughput of the buses. But adding more of them to that first station is only asking for traffic jams right now. First, let's add a bit of variety to the latest area we portioned off. Right now, we only have beech trees, but including the other types should be a good addition to the place. The main tree type is still the beech trees, but I really wanted to include a couple of the others here and there. And to complete the picture, we just need to get rid of the dry dirt texture from under the dividers. I was tempted to keep them around, but ultimately, I decided that it looks better without it. Next, how about we continue regrowing some grass around the place. Some of the redevelopment around the farm for example left some dry patches we should clean up. I think the amount of dry dirt around the pipes is also a bit excessive. And since planting trees along the riverbank seem to have worked quite well, might as well do the rest of it. Same as before, I like to remove trees from the very edges of the coast. I know it's pretty common to have trees right on the shore, but for some reason, it just doesn't look right to me in the game. It seems those service issues we experienced in the last episode are starting to go away. Pretty soon, we will only have complaints about the lack of alcohol in the country. Looking forward to it. And since the footpaths on the other side of these apartments are done, we can sever this connection, in order to fix the ground a little bit. And here come the services I talked about. First things first, we will definitely need a shop at this place. Unfortunately, I did make a mistake, and ended up building the small shop, instead of the proper shopping center. On the bright side, I will discover this error later in the episode, so we should have the necessary buildings in the next video. Next, we need a place for sports. We already have indoor pools. How about we build an outdoor one? Fortunately for us, our republic is in a warm climate, with comfortable temperatures year-round, so it should be accessible all the time.
We also need a cultural center, and the National Uprising Museum seemed to be a good candidate. I was fairly certain that these buildings will be out of range for the central hospital, so we would be well advised to build a second one. A lot of people are going to live here, so I doubt a small clinic would cut it. Of course, childcare is an absolute must. And that includes not only a kindergarten, but a proper school as well. With the developers saying that the research update is on the horizon, maybe we should start building the other types of universities. We already have two technical ones, so maybe it's time for a medical too. But maybe in the next town, this place has enough colleges I think. While looking at the other services, I was wondering how the police are doing these days. They seem to be alright, but just in case, we should really give them two more patrol cars, just to complete the set. They already have two Trabants, maybe the others should be those Lada 125s. Good thing I checked on the rail construction when I did. Blue Moon is stuck, and even the new path finding AI is having trouble freeing it. And it seems thanks to all the signals, the rail construction office cannot find a path to the remaining rail segment to build it. We just need a temporary switch, a bit of signal rearrangement, and it should be good to go. And with traffic really starting to get busy in town, we should start upgrading the lower street to asphalt as well. The side streets will likely remain gravel though. We just need to be careful not to overdo the upgrades. If we take it slow, traffic should still be more or less unaffected by all the commotion. Now, since the services and the new housing development are underway, we can turn our attention to some extra things. Like more sports facilities. Not strictly necessary, they are more for decoration than for their functional benefits. I think that football field with the bleachers and the track field around it should be a good addition here. I have a feeling the people living there will appreciate the entertainment they can watch from the comfort of their balconies. I'm not sure how I will decorate the rest of the place. So many areas are left empty, I'm a bit spoiled for choice. Now, before you comment on it, yes, I did just leave the Uprising Museum without a connection. That is an error, which I will fix in the next episode. Same go for the hospital, but that one I will fix today. We will also need power, some of the buildings are out of range for the nearest substation. But before I got to it, I got distracted by the swimming pool's lack of footpath access. The next order of business was the coastal embankment. As usual, we will need to create a level ground first, and then we can place the buildings themselves. 
But before we do that, let's check on the track layers, and make sure they are capable of building the necessary tracks for the food warehouse. Almost forgot to set one of the signals to be two-way, so they can actually enter the building site. Now, let's get started on the embankment. That should do it for now. There's only really one reason why I wanted to continue the coast, and that is the final placement of the shipping dock. First we need to place the embankments. Four should be plenty enough. Now, here's the thing. What I'm doing now, that is completely unnecessary. As it turns out, I could have just simply left the embankments where they were, and built the dock right on top. I keep forgetting that these coastal walls have no collision boxes, so not only can we clip them through existing buildings, but we can also clip other stuff through them. You know, the fact that I could plant trees along their green grassy areas before should have been a dead giveaway, but here we are. but doesn't really matter, the end result is the same, it's just a bit more complicated than it needs to be. By the way, this is where I managed to hook the hospital up to the road network. And since the first big road segment got upgraded, let's continue that project too. Now, the food warehouse branch is complete. We can get rid of the temporary crossing track. The signaling should be okay as far as I can tell. And would you look at that? We have over a million in the bank already, and we are completely debt free. We can buy trains without having to worry about it for once. It's the same idea we used for the other car types. We buy one locomotive, along with six cars, and then tell the train to move the cars to the distribution offices. Unfortunately, the best box car is still not available, so we will have to settle for the inferior models for now. And that's that for the domestic distribution office. At this point, I should have just told the train to be assigned to the office, but I wanted to get the export train as well, so that got me a bit distracted. Thankfully, we will manage to catch it before it can go for a second trip around the main line. Hold up, don't leave. You should stay where you are. And that is it for the new train wagons. By the way, I think the trees are still a bit too tall to give a nice view of the town for the trains. At the end of the episode, I will make a small but drastic change to the fields, which should fix that issue. The reason why I will do it at the end should be obvious by now. Deleting trees, reloading the game, and all that jazz. Anyways, let's start setting up the deliveries. The internal office will deal with the food for the town warehouse. And the other one will obviously do the exports, once the farm storage goes above 80%.
And with that, we can tell the road-based offices to stop bothering with this job from now on. The big boys got it covered. This also frees up two whole assignment slots for them, which means we have five in total we can work with. There is plenty of space for five more big fields on the other side of the tracks. This also got me thinking. Now that we have trains, we don't really need the town distribution office to go to the border to pick up electronics anymore. We can even add a meat delivery train into the mix. That should get rid of a little bit of road traffic. The services in town are still under construction, so how about we replenish the trees in the Udegrad forest? It's not as critical as it was in the last series, near the old chemical factory. But I still like to stay on top of it. As usual, I go overboard with the planting at the start, and then just trim the excess around the rail tracks at the end. The important thing is to replace the ones cut down in the middle of the forest. The athletic field is complete. There are a few built-in footpaths that look a bit awkward, so how about we connect them all up? Okay. I don't think we really need that connection onto the tracks directly. This looks fine. We just need a cosmetic texture for the last one, and the illusion is complete. Checking up on the houses, it seems the service issues we had in the last episode are now pretty much all gone. In some places, the only complaint left is the lack of alcohol. There is still a bit of spirituality left, but it's going quickly. The biggest outstanding issue now is the unemployment. And for that, we will need to deal with the bus routes, but that will have to wait until the next episode. I tried to let the usual test subjects into one of the apartment blocks, but as it turns out, the towers aren't full yet. They are very close, but there are still a couple free flats left to fill. While that was going on, I decided to finally do something about this plaza. I just didn't like the gravel texture around the fountain. All we needed to do was to add an extra footpath as a divider, and we could get rid of the majority of the gravel, but still leave it around the clinic intact. I did accidentally remove a piece at the foot of the tower. Only noticed it during editing. I think this will look a bit nicer. And since I was in a decorating zone, how about we do a bit more for this plaza in front of the concert hall? For some reason it still felt a bit empty. Maybe adding a pair of these long flower beds to enclose them a bit will do the trick. Yeah, already looks a bit better I think. To cap it off, 
Maybe we could place a small square piece under the monuments. It's a bit awkward with the footpath icon covering the whole thing, but managed to place them relatively okay. Well, what could be the problem here? Oh right, there are no turnarounds anywhere on the main line, and because of that, there is no way for trains to go from the Udegrad branch to the town distribution. Unfortunately, there is only really one way to fix this quickly, and that is to build a temporary connection which will allow these deliveries to be completed. The thing is, for a more permanent solution, we will need to plan things out, and that takes time, something which the town food deliveries cannot afford. So this is a very quick and messy solution, which will be removed once a more enduring one can be implemented. As far as I could tell, the track layers should be perfectly capable of building these tracks, thanks to their new pathfinding AI, so it was only a matter of time before the food deliveries can continue. Just for good measure, I did stop the coastal tracks for a second, so they would focus on the important things before they go back out there. Okay good, I don't see any question marks hovering over the head of Blue Moon, so it can find its way back to the office. With the hospital complete, we might as well buy the ambulances now. We are no longer in the early days, where every penny had to be accounted for. And I finally remembered that we still need power for this end of the island. In the meantime, the ship dock also got built. We can replace the embankments now. As I've said before, it turned out to be an unnecessary exercise, but I'm still not quite used to having these building mods without collision boxes. Yeah, that will do nicely. Looking at the population statistics, we can see the first unhoused adults showing up. I won't do it today, but by the end, we will have enough of them to start testing the new housing blocks. Now, remember when I said that six box cars should fit into the warehouse platform. As it turns out, that isn't the case. For now, I will just send this train home, but there is only really one way to fix it quickly enough. First, we need to measure the length of the platform, which turned out to be around 80 meters. Then, we just need to tell the two distribution offices to only assemble trains that are no longer than that. This will only shorten the trains for the time being, the overall amount of exports and deliveries should still be perfectly adequate for our needs. Especially the exports. 
This just means that they will happen a bit more often, the actual money flow will stay the same in the long term. But regardless of all that, I believe we can still make the warehouse platform longer, we just need to rethink how it is connected to the main line. I can already tell you, there is more than enough room to build the junction a little bit further down the line. It might even make it look a bit more organized that way. Anyways, now the export wagons are all full of food. No matter, sooner or later they will be sold automatically, they just need a bit of time. Now that the tourists have been coming here for a lengthy period, it seems they managed to give us about 25 to 30,000 rubles per month. Still not the biggest source of income, but still a worthwhile investment. Now, here's what I decided to do with these fields. Their biggest problem is that some of the hills I introduced have trees on top, and they are still blocking the view of the town skyline. There is a pretty easy fix however. How about instead of using hills, we carve out small valleys instead. The terrain will still look natural, but instead of the slopes towering above the regular ground level, they will instead dip below it. Yeah, it does get rid of the trees and bushes, but that's why I did this near the end of the episode. We don't have to wait long before the next reload, after which we can fix the lines. I didn't memorize the pattern before I got rid of it, so this new one will be a bit different. Yeah, still a decent looking arrangement. And this is where I realized my error in choosing the shop type of the new houses. I accidentally built the one that only gives out clothes and electronics. I could have just built a grocery store for the same effect, but why settle for two buildings, when the same job can be done by one? Let's make sure the hospital has fuel, before I completely forget about it. We also need these embankments built, and for that we need footpaths. I'm kind of glad those pairs of connections managed to weave together like that. They will be covered up by gravel texture anyway, but, thanks to the presence of the docks, we need both of them to build all the embankments. And let's not forget to continue upgrading the main streets. We might as well trim back the coast for the embankments now. No need to leave them jutting out like that anymore. That pesky pile of dirt didn't want to cooperate. But you know what, I think I won't mind. It's not uncommon to have features like that in certain places. I'm glad to see food being delivered to the town. It means the temporary solutions are doing their jobs.
although that temporary connection did mess with the signals a bit, I think we can put some of them back. In the end, we will only need to move two of them once the turnaround branch is built. And would you look at that? The food in the boxcars are already sold. Now, this is where I noticed that the museum wasn't connected to the roads, and was about to do it, but the street next to it was being paved. I didn't want to disturb that process, so I will just do it in the next episode. Speaking of the next episode, let's go over what we can expect. One will be the rebuilding of the food warehouse's platform. As I've said, there is more than enough room to make it longer, we just need to run it parallel with the main tracks a little longer before we connect them up. Maybe even bring it all the way down to the main junction after the bridge. There are also a couple small things. The museum road connection, changing the RDO train lengths back to normal and we need to build some kind of turnaround opportunity along the main line, so we can get rid of those temporary tracks in the big junction. Anyways, thank you for watching. If you liked the video, then leaving a like and subscribing to the channel just might motivate me to make more. If you are more in the donating mood, you can find a link to my Kofi page in the description, where you can buy me a glass of water. I don't really drink coffee. Thank you for your support, and until next time, I will see you later.